Oh, you're using the Club English. Uh, yes, I've seen that. I recently saw that. Um, I wanted to look at the Club English resource. That would be fantastic. Um, and you can always go throughout the year. We have some really great. So welcome to American People Presents Free Friday Webinars. I'm Shelley Sanchez Terrell, your host. I've been doing this for two years. And I just renewed my contract for 2014, so you'll get to see me again and lots of new different topics. And people would be very surprised because they think after a hundred and something webinars, you'd lose things to say. But that's the great thing about teaching. There's always something great and wonderful coming. So one of the upcoming webinars that I think you'll be very interested in is we're going to do an A through Z of teaching trends and teaching words that you should know. And also, um, we'll be throughout the year covering more and more of those. So things like you get to find out about really hard stuff like cloud computing, uh, QR codes, uh, that kind of stuff. Exactly, Instagram. Actually, one of our upcoming uh, webinars um, in January is and February is how to use Instagram for classes and how to also use um, Pinterest. So those should be very exciting and interesting. Um, but just to get you familiar, so if you're a new teacher and all of this is very new to you, you can find out about things like Maker Hour or Genius Hour, Maker Spaces or coding and things like that that you may not be very familiar with. A lot of these things have, very, have free resources, and they're really great to use with language learners. So we'll be covering a lot of them throughout the year. You can always drop in any Friday about this time, and you always get um, chances to have a free certificate um, from American TESOL Institute. And American TESOL is recognized um, around the world. We do offer graduate programs uh, when people take the American TESOL courses they're able to actually get graduate credit. So um, you can also get your TESOL certificate. So that's one of the great things about it. But we offer this for free, and you can download the certificate. Um, you can also go to the bit.ly address that's there, and you can get all of the resources and the slides for free. So you can download all these to use when you want. Today we're going to talk about photography tools and apps, but also different ideas for having photography, especially to get your learners to speak, um, to talk, because that's one of the most important things that we can do is, is get our learners to um, talk as well. We also record all of these, by the way, and all of that you can find in the bit.ly address. But why take the time to have your students share their photos? Um, these are actually student photos um, that were recently in a class that I was teaching in Slovenia. So these were a bunch of their photos, and we put them all um, against the wall. There's a, quite a few things. One, one of them is because your students, they love taking pictures. Uh, one of the biggest, largest social networks that is very new, uh, with maybe two years old, is Instagram. And students love to share their lives. They love to take pictures, and they love to pretend they are uh, photographers and they love the filters and they love all the amazing things that you can do with free photo tools and apps now. Oh no, just no problem. Hi Maggie, we were just talking about our upcoming 2014. This is the last one of 2013. So we're so excited um, to be rounding it off this way. Uh, but one of the great things is when you have pictures and you have your students bring them, you don't necessarily have to take them in class. But if you teach your students how to take a great picture, they have the vocabulary in their mind, and they can visualize, and they can put the context around the vocabulary. And it's very meaningful to them because they took the picture. So it's the way that they visualize, they contextualize the vocabulary that you're teaching them. Now, one of the great things about photography is you can do this with any lesson. So let's say you're teaching math. There are numbers. They can take pictures of numbers. They can take uh, visual representations of fractions, or, you know, fractions in your everyday life. They can do it of science every single day. They can take a picture, and it can represent, for example, if you're studying a spider um, and you want to see a picture of its web progress every day, or a plant. You grow the plant in class. You can take a picture, and you can post that every day. You can keep it online, and you don't have to take any space up. You don't have to print anything like that. 
Um, but if you do, then it becomes very meaningful, and the students love that as well. So pictures, there's so much that you can do with an image. And so here are a few lesson ideas, um, just throwing it out there, but there's hundreds and hundreds more that you can do with your learners. It's good for every age group. It's also good for young learners um, to older learners, but also with their language level. Um, you can do something very basic, like a writing prompt, uh, something that where you put a picture of a heart, maybe that picture that we saw with all the hearts in the pictures, and say, choose one and write a memory, or discuss a memory that it brings to mind, or write a poem, write a five-line haiku, or something like that. So there's so many different ways. You can use them as writing prompts, discussion prompts. Let's talk about what any of pick a photo and talk about a memory it inspires. So there's so many things you can do with a picture or pictures. One of the things that I like my learners to do is keep a visual dictionary. Uh, we do that through Flickr. I'll say something like restaurant. That's what we're studying for the week because we go by themes and each week they see on their calendar the pictures they have a few times at the beginning of the course we tell them that we for challenges um, your mission is to go out and each week you have have to take a picture. Um, your mission is to take a picture of what in your life or family, clothing, these things you cover, they can take a picture of them and all of a sudden they're thinking about the vocabulary outside of the class. So that's what I really love. And it becomes meaningful. They remember that vocabulary because they keep using that vocabulary. They can use their pictures for digital stories. They can use it for memes. We'll see what that is. If they write a blog or the journal, you can use these as different writing props. And the great thing is if you get your students to pair or if you get them to post a picture, then they can trade with their friends. So for the day, they can take their mobile device, whatever they took a picture of, they don't even have to print it. They can just switch that. If you can use mobile devices, then you can switch it with a friend, and there, that's what you're writing about. You can say, here, there's your writing prompt. Write a poem with this. Write, they can write a poem. They can write a joke. They can write a short story. They can write dialogue. They can write digital stories. There's so many things they can do that. The beginning of a story, the end of a story. The middle, write an essay saying you agree with this picture and using this in an advertisement. There's so many things you can do. You can put all the pictures together and create a magazine. So, for example, if you're studying history, a point in time, a lot of times students can't uh, picture this because they're not from there. Our, our students group in a different age. Everything's digital. They can't imagine when you had talk in a real phone, and they can't imagine uh, having things where uh, you, they don't understand times when there is no movie theaters or, you know, that's very hard for them. Um, if you're studying the Victorian times, then you can always have them take pictures and they can put filters to make it look Victorian. So there are many ways you can make a magazine all on a subject. Oh, we're creating a restaurant as a class, bake a meal or have, um, um, make a meal or take a picture of your mom's favorite meal she made that week. And then we're going to add it to the magazine with the recipes. You can do scrapbooks, newspapers, presentations. So there's many things that you can do with these. One of my favorite things to do is a photo challenge. And there's an app that actually took, um, you can check it out. It's called Belt to get an idea. And so you can come, you can take the photo challenges they have posted, but it's a social network where your students will match whatever um, challenge you have. So you can do this really easily with idioms. So for example, if you're sharing a bunch of idioms about, or quotes, let's say that you have a goal quote, okay? Maybe it's Henry Ford and it says something like obstacles are those things that 
uh, get in the way when you're not keeping eye of your vision or something like that, then they can go ahead and they can take a bunch of pictures that represent that photo challenge. Or here they have, take a picture of something popping. Take a picture of something you should not keep in your pocket, um, which I recently found with my lip gloss because it exploded all over my purse. So it's something I shouldn't keep in my purse. Now my, my purse smells like cherries. Um, and everything's very sticky. <laughs> um, um, An emotion, um, take a picture. I've had them do this with math as well. Take a picture of, you know, eight, your eight favorite things or um, just different fractions or geometric shapes of a circle, of a sphere, of opposites, of things that are opposite and you place them together. The perfect Mother's Day gift, your favorite gift for Christmas, the worst Christmas gift ever. <laughs> So there's different ways that you can have them. Um, you can take the challenges from there. I don't necessarily recommend Bout unless you have older learners. Then it's a free app and you can use it. It's iOS, I believe. Um, so I wouldn't because it doesn't have any filters, but it's a great way to find challenges. So if you want to post your own photo challenges, once again, you can do these challenges easily through Flickr. So. It's up to you or an Instagram account. And what you do is if you have a class Instagram account, then you can add a hashtag. And they can all put it on the hashtag. Now, you have to make your hashtag very specific. Miss Daniela's fifth grade class or Daniela fifth grade writers or uh, Shelly Terrell Pucksters or something. And the reason you have to do that is because hashtags are open to everyone. So if you do have an Instagram account with your class and things like that, and you want to keep it all with the hashtag, even on Flickr. If you do this with a Flickr, you can do it with a class Flickr account. Um, the great thing about a class Flickr account is that if you do do it with a class Flickr, then they just have to email to one address. And if they email to one address, um, then it's really great because then it's automatically posted when you approve it. You can also, it's a great way to, when they send it through email, one of the great things is when they send it through email, you can grade it. You can check off that, that it was done. It was completed. Um, you can use something like a Google Form Mule, and it will automatically do it for you as well. It will automatically list that they had the grades done. But that's something else that we'll look at in a future webinar. And we actually talked about it in a webinar in the past. So you can go back and you can take a look at that. Um, so here's an example of the kind of mission I'm talking about. So on a wiki, um, I usually do these on wikis, uh, but you can do this now. I love Tumblr. I think Tumblr is one of the greatest things. Um, it's really easy to use, in my opinion. So you can even do this on a Instagram. Uh, you just take a picture of it. Um, but they every day they see this mission, so you can Instagram as picture of the mission. And I'll say something like, snap a photo of graffiti you think could be uh, art and tell us through an audio recording why you think it's art versus just graffiti. Tell them to write it down. They don't have to record it. Um, the, but they can do that through, they can make a video through Instagram. So if you videos and just add it to the account. Um, one of the great things about that, and then you can give uh, points. You can do that with the points. You can give them bonus points if they put it in their blog. Uh, the great thing about these kind of things is then you can add it later, and you can uh, go ahead and you can you can have this um, in in their digital projects. They can reuse these for any kind of movie they make in the future, or if they're giving a prompt to one of their students. So you can reuse these, and that's the idea I want to give you is have reuse these. Artifacts, um, they're taking artifacts, primary sources. They're taking context. Reuse them in other classes. That's what I do. I give these examples again and again, and I use them for years and years. Um, and it has real language, and it's real from the students' experiences. So it's much better than what you can get in a textbook. So I really like this a lot. When you do this, um, the points, the way that I like to equal the points, Okay, they have a week. This mission isn't every day. This is a mission they finish within the week. They have a week to do it. They don't do it. They don't get the points. And so at the end of the year, all the points are calculated. I usually have a calculator in my spreadsheet, and they're worth something. 
So, you know, if they get, um, and this becomes either a participation grade or you can make it even within um, a grade of your class as a whole, um, which is usually like 10% of it and things like that. So that there's different things that you can do with this um, as far as grading goes. It depends on your grading system. But I try to make it equal to whatever um, a, an actual grade would be. So they see it as points, but it actually becomes a grade after. So this is one of the ones I took in Croatia. Um, when I actually showed them this, I just showed them the symbols. I thought it was great for language learners because then when I showed them the symbols, maybe I can make it um, bigger. So I just showed them the, the symbols. And when I did that, I said, what do you think, putting the symbols together, it was like a pictogram. I said, what do you think the, that this would represent? What do you think this would represent? What do you, of course, they said money, they listed a whole bunch of things here, you know, TV, um, here, so all of these, and we, we talked about this particular type of graffiti, and then um, we talked about the image after, so they did brainstorming first, they guessed, um, predicted what this would mean, all of these pictograms together, and then we talked about the message the graffiti artist was saying. Uh, but the great thing is that you could have debate. Debate was sparked out of that. Ideas. We had a lot of discussion. We had brainstorming. And then we did a writing afterwards um, where they had to take their own um, political, politically um, infused um, graffiti, like uh, Alexander was saying, Banksy pictures. Um, so they would take pictures around, and but it had to say something, it had to make a statement on society or political, and then they would write out what they thought, and they would depict the symbols. So that's a lot of creative writing and thinking for language learners, and they did this on their own time. This is their mission, too. Um, so, and it was worth so many points, like 90 points for this, 90 for this. I, and so, for me, I, I think when you do missions with your learners and challenges, um, and so saying you have to do this, it's much better. They tend to do them better. Uh, but also for them, it's their benefit, and that's what I'm trying to show them. If you do this, you benefit from it. If you don't do it, then you're not going to benefit. You're not going to um, be better at your English level or your language speaking level or writing level or reading level. You're not. That's not going to improve unless you complete the missions or challenges. Uh, so that's why I try to do it in that respect. So when you're having your learners do pictures, a lot of us assume that our learners are going to be really great and know this intuitively. But I used to run a camp where I taught in a museum. And we used to teach lessons like this. Um, we used to even go back and show them things like zoetropes and things like that, which were first moving pictures. They would make these. And kaleidoscopes, they would make their own kaleidoscopes, a lot of hands-on stuff. But when we would do this, we would actually dissect a camera. <laughs> we would take it apart, and we would look at the different settings. So with your learners, you can do this as a discussion or something so they can just learn vocabulary for one day. Have them press the camera on their mobile device. And then have them um, take a look at the actual settings so they can review their settings, they can learn vocabulary that is for that. So they can say, what are those symbols on the top? Well, let's press them. And then they can test out pictures. They can take a picture of the same thing a hundred times, okay? Um, and then they can do playing with the different elements, the focus, the image size, the scene mode. There's so many things you can do with a the camera these days. And then this depending on what I teach a lot with bring your own device. So they bring their own devices. They bring their own cameras. They can even bring a digital camera. So if they're not allowed to use their phones, that's okay. Because a lot of times you'll see that parents have a digital camera. Um, or even if they have the regular camera. A lot of the regular cameras have settings like this. So you, everyone brings in their camera that they plan to use for the rest of the year for the photo challenges. And then they, they get a day learn things like white balance. You learn things about focus. What does it mean to be not in focus? Um, a lot of things that you can learn about. After you review that and have a lesson about that, then you can talk. we can talk about the prop, 
the process of what it means to just capture. So then your students are putting a lot of meaningful work and they really do feel like they're artists, like you're teaching them a skill here. It's not just about taking pictures and putting a nice Instagram filter, although that is very nice and <laughs> it's a very editorial. And why would you want to do that? Well, there's a few reasons you want to do that. One of the reasons is for perspective. And I think language is very good for perspective because what you're doing is you're taking your students through lenses of the way they see the world and you're making them focus when you do that. When you put it in a camera, you make them focus. You really make them hone in. And that's a literacy skill. When we think about reading and we think about um, teaching language in, ling in English, too many times our students want to do this. And they see all of this. And they rarely learn to focus. So we really want to get them to be in the act of focus and editing. We want them to take out the muck and the goop. And we want them to learn this literacy skill of focus, editing, make sure that what you're doing, um, what you're learning, um, is, is, is the value. You're evaluating that information. You're evaluating that language. You're depicting it. You're seeing um, the, the different um, parts of language and speech. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why the act of, of taking a good picture is really good as well. Um, so editing, we can teach them editing. And then there's the upload and publishing. So we're going to go through that. One of the best resources that I found is actually um, a Tumblr site, and I love Tumblr. I think it's the easiest way to blog. Um, you have to watch out if they go anywhere off your site because uh, that can be crazy. But it, this particular one here, if you go to, it has a bunch of things about uh, photos and taking good photos, and it tells you a lot. It tells you the different parts. I love teaching with infographics, so for me, this is this is a cool thing because. I love teaching with infographics. It talks about the different elements of composition, um, light, how to select the right light, lighting tricks, outdoor lighting, indoor, different things like that, how to use your camera to get the best light for a picture. Um, and you can always give bonus points for those who take the time to really use these different elements and incorporate it to let them know that you're paying attention, that they paid attention. Um, the practice, and it has the technique, how to go from here. If you think of one picture, if you think of something like this water bottle, there's a hundred ways I can take a picture of this water bottle. There's a hundred filters I can use. I can take it just of this, of one little drop. I mean, there's so many things you can do. So um, for your learners, it's interesting to, do, to let them know that. One of the things that they will learn, or they should learn right away, and this is a picture I took when I was recently in Atlanta, is the rule of thirds. And this is the rule of thirds. You basically, you take everything in threes, you cut it up like this, and you align it. Now, one of the great things if you do get an Instagram account and your students um, have an Insta, you have an Instagram hashtag that you create for your class. Instagram automatically does this rule of thirds. I'm going to show you. Um, I, I recently saw it's one of their updates. They have many new updates. If you haven't seen Instagram, you can take videos now. You can send them privately to people. They never had that. It just happened this week. So it's good if you take a look at your Instagram. I'm going to go ahead and show you what that looks like. So I have my little Instagram icon. Now, remember, Instagram is an app. You can only do it. Um, online, but um, I'm going to go here. This is what it looks like. Somebody put a picture of their words with friends, though. So I go home. I'm going to take a picture, so I click the picture camera. And notice how it automatically does the three? I can take a shot. See, there's my nose. The thing is that you're supposed to focus on something with the rule of thirds. I think that's a more interesting selfie, but whatever. <laughs> so you can see those lines, that grid that's automatically there. My nose looks really big in this light. <laughs> now we can go here. Um, and so then it goes back and tells you about technical de details, um, how to keep your lens clean, which I think is really awesome, um, experimenting with balance. 
um, resolution. You can take a far picture. You can take a really close picture. Um, and it, what the resolution is. Now, this is very important because when they're turning in projects and stuff, I told you with Flickr you get a terror. Um, oh, thanks, Peggy, for sharing that uh, rule of thirds uh, with us to learn more. Um, but when you're taking a picture, the resolution is very important. There's a few reasons why. The higher the resolution, the more memory and space it's going to take. So storage-wise, you want to keep it small. You want to keep it focused and small. A lot of cameras will take much better pictures if they're smaller anyway. And if you're not going to use it for anything big or grand, like you're not going to print it out or anything, you're going to use it for an online magazine you create or newspaper, then it's going to be OK. Um, there, don't use digital zoom. Um, best ways to miss a shot. So the, the, I really do like this particular one a lot. And then the practice. And you know, that's with anything. The more you practice, and that's something to get a hold of. Um, your students, the more they practice, the more they're practicing language because they're, they're visualizing their language. They're visualizing because they're going to use this for English and they're going to use this to support their writing and their speaking. So we want them to practice, practice. And we say this is and their practice because this way they don't realize it really is homework. <laughs> editing. So let's see. One of the best things about editing is filters. We all love filters. Now the great thing about filters is, especially with things like Instagram, is that you get something where you can make it look old time. And I think this is so great because when you're teaching history, when you're teaching those things like the 1920s or something and you need sepia to make it cool, or you want to do a silent film and it's black and white, that's what you need, then you can and it makes it easy to do something very quick. So this doesn't, it's not very time consuming. So if you, and you, it's a nice, you can go outside and you can take a picture of something specific like, let's say you're learning about weather or nature or the color green or um, spring, a type of weather, or animals, or something like that, you can go outside and you can have them take pictures of this to add to the vocabulary list. We sometimes call this a vocabulary word wall as well. You can do the word wall with the different pictures as well. Um, they can even do pictograms, where this person's picture plus this person's picture plus that person's picture equals a word, or a phrase, or a quote. So these are all different ideas that you can use. Um, Be Funky has many web filters as well. If you have, the best thing about Be Funky is it's on the web, it's on your computer, it's also, and it's free. It's also on Chrome, it's a Chrome tool, so you can use it as an extension. If you use a browser such as Chrome, just go to your extensions and you'll find it. You can use it as an app as well. So it's on your computer, but it's also a free app, and you can have it for Android or you can have it for iPad, iPod, it's all free. Um, if you have the Android version, and I don't know if they put it in the iOS version yet, you can add text, which is something I love. It's great for photo prompts. So I actually was in Lincoln, Nebraska, and I took a picture of this old-time car because they had these classic cars. And then I blew it up. I zoomed it in. And there was my rule of thirds there. And then this. I put, we were ta talking about geometric shapes, and I put, what is this? What shape does it represent? So you can answer that if you want. What, what shape does it represent? What is it? And he was studying about math. Um, you can do something like Pick Monkey. Pick Monkey is what I use. It is not an app. It is only online. But the great thing is it's free. You can do these beautiful collages. Uh, recently, if you saw my collage of Roscoe and me, I do them all through Pick Monkey. You can add something new, and this gives you stickers, and you can add things like Santa hats and beards and mustaches, which your students will love. So if they want to dress themselves up as 1920s characters, or let's pretend we're going to see Shakespeare, and we want to take pictures of different phrases and stuff to understand Shakespeare, we can do that. We can represent it visually. You can go to PicMonkey, and you can dress yourself up. So you can make yourself character. So it's really, really cool. Um, thank you, Peggy. <laughs>
project ideas. So let's look at a few project ideas. Well, you can do a nature scrapbook. You can have where your students go and they take pictures. This is better. I used to have my students go and they, we used to take the Ziploc bags and they would put the natures and then we would do the leaves. But nowadays, there's a lot of places where it preserves it. So if you're going hiking or anything like that, they actually say, please do not disturb the nature. So this is a greener way to have a nature book. You can go online. You can um, make it look really pretty. You can add text to go with it. You can classify things like a rock collection, or you can go and take pictures, and then you can use um, those. You can put it up to Google Image, and you can search and find out what that flower is, what that plant is, what that bug is. You can do research online and learn more vocabulary, work with more vocabulary. So you can create a really beautiful nature scrapbook with byslide.com. It's a really great tool. Um, you can create characters. So let's say you're studying a character, and you go and you want them to create character scrapbooks. So it's sort of like what you would do with a regular scrapbook, except it's all online. You can do this with Pic Collage or Kuliba, which are really good apps. Or you can even do this with uh, Buncee. Buncee is a great tool. I'll show you what that is. But this is Pic Collage. It's a free app for your Android or iPod, iPhone, iPad. Um, you can add words to it. You can make it look like this. I use Pic Collage a lot when I don't use Pic Monkey because I sometimes Pic Collage has the stickers that I want. Sometimes it doesn't. So if I do it online, I will use Pic Collage. I can show you what that looks like really quick. Um, so let's say we're learning about Shakespeare, and I want my students to to understand the characters Romeo, Juliet. So then I'll have them make scrapbooks, and then they put what Romeo or Juliet is thinking. You know, because the scrapbook is like sort of like a journal. It's capturing memories and moments. And your students do this all the time. Yearbooks are scrapbooks. Um, their parents, their parents do baby books um, when they're a baby, the first words. They're memories. Their memories captured in photos and with stickers. And, and so um, making one online, a digital one, is quite easy, and it's nice as well. So this is the free pic collage app. Um, it's a very colorful one. It says, party with your pics. Um, this is the one I recently did with um, Jake, the boyfriend. Ah. And apparently, so um, you can do different types of things. Um, here's where we did one. We did that one recently. You pick different kinds of frames and stuff. Notice how I added mustaches and stuff to Roscoe. Roscoe got a little hat and a beard, different things like that. So your students will really love that. And you can add different words and stuff as well. It's very easy to use. They can add five or ten minutes. So it's an easy lesson to give as well. So you can actually, I've gone and you can do it within a 45 minute lesson. At the beginning, they brainstorm, OK, here's the character that you Let's say you're doing Pride and Prejudice. Mr. Darcy, um, you know, <laughs> and then you, you, they can say, what would he, he, they brainstorm. First, they brainstorm. What is it that Mr. Darcy would have in his scrapbook? What memories throughout the book that we read is he going to make a collection of? And then they write it down. Oh, the first time he kissed Elizabeth, Benny. Um, the first time he danced with her. The first time they got in a fight. So these are all memories. And then they're, this is what they're going to put in the scrapbook. So then they, we say, OK, go online, find pictures, or take your own pictures, and then add them, and then put what memory it represents, and write the different theme on it. And then they visualize it. They're reviewing the chapter. They're reviewing what they read uh, recently. So it's a great reviewing topic as well. They can do all of this. They make the, the pic collage or the buncee really fast. Um, in 10 minutes, they can do it. And then it's a 45-minute uh, lesson. Oh, no, that's OK. Everybody always spells Rasko wrong. <laughs> um, buncee is a great way. You can even add music. I have the buncee um, year one, uh, the great people of buncee. And, and the great thing about that is these are what they look like. You can have templates already in place. You can have pictures and audio. But if you have the, the Buncee for ESL, then it also gives you a recording. So you can add a, a microphone to this, to any of your Buncees. And your students can record messages. So that's really great. They're embeddable, so you can embed them. 
Um, this is a bunch of looks like you can embed this in a blog, in a wiki, in, in your website. Um, and your students can come and comment on them. So that's one of the great things. You can add backgrounds. They have backgrounds to choose. Your students can add photos. They can add videos, audio, text. The videos can be YouTube videos as well. The audio is from SoundCloud. They have messages, quotes, drawings, stickers, you name it, they got it. Um, Bunfy is a free iPod, iPad, iOS, iPhone app, okay? So you can go and you can make uh, pictures that are interactive. Like here, they have Sleepy Puppy, but I could have drawn on it. I could have drawn a mustache on that puppy. I could have drawn a Santa hat. Um, I could add tags. I could add frames, uh, different things as well. Uh, the other thing you can do is uh, with Photo Peach. Photo Peach, you can make quizzes out of your pictures. So it's a slideshow, and you can make quizzes out of them. This is one that uh, Mariana did from um, Slovenia. Oh no, from Croatia. So when I was in Aguilan, and she made one for Frankenstein. They were studying Frankenstein, and she made a quiz with different pictures from the book. They can create an online book. Now I'm just showing you a bunch of tools that where you can have activities and projects and your students can do things. This is when I was in Brazil. This is one of the uh, students that I worked with, uh, Juliana, and she made a memory book of us. Um, she used Pim Pam Pom Net dot Booker. Booker takes all your Flickr photos and then you can add text. So it's just basically an online book of your photos. It's a great way to tell a digital story. Very easy and quick to do. BigHugeLabs.com lets you do tons of projects. You can make motivational posters. You can make a movie poster. You can make a magazine cover. You can do things like um, you can make a calendar. You can make a map. You can make a badge. Um, different things you can do. Your favorite so surfer. So many different things at Big Huge Labs. I create motivational posters or demotivational ones as they call it of Roscoe all the time. Here's Roscoe, my baby, my pug. And if you'll notice my shirt, this is uh, what I got from my partner, uh, Jake. Um, the shirt of Roscoe is on here. So, <laughs> you don't have to. Oh, do you? You can pay for it, but all of these things are free. One of the things you may not know about Big Huge Labs that I recently found, so this may be a tool you already use, but you probably don't know this. If you write Big Huge Labs and you let them know you're a teacher, it takes a little bit of time. They'll take out all the ads. So one of the things that they get really, if teachers get upset with it, they say, I have all these ads on Big Huge Labs, which you do. But um, if you write to them, the people are very nice. And for teachers, they'll take out all the ads for you in all of those generators. So um, make sure to do that, and they'll do it for you. Kizoa is this new site I found. I love it. It's a great way to make musical, beautiful slideshows and collages. Um, the one thing about Kizoa, it is free. It's free online on your computer. The one thing to be warned of is it you can't run any other program with it, is what I found. So um, I used to love Vimeo. Vimeo no longer works. Um, so now I've replaced it with Kizoa, kizoa.com. Um, it's free, it's fun, TV, they have templates and all of this great stuff. The problem is that it does take a lot of um, memory on your computer, so you can't really have anything else going on. Blabberize, I love Blabberize. It's absolutely fantastic. It's online, you make your pictures talk. You have Moozy, Moozy lets you do 100 things with pictures. I've made collages in the past with that. It has all of these apps. It has PicMonkey on it, photo quote. Um, Thoughts, text, memes, all kinds of stuff, comics, anything, a lot of language things that you can do very, very fast. So, and these are my apps. I love Instagram, Be Funky, Pit Collage, Photomania, Image Chef, Musy, Bingling, Bunty, Frame Artist, Flickr, Coolabob, Comic Tags, and recently my favorite is um, Shatterpix. So I'll show you Shatterpix. I've been doing a lot of Roscoe the Pug ones lately. Um, but Shatterpix is a lot like, um, it's a what was the one that I just said, uh, where well, you can make the mouse, Blabberize. But it's online, this is Shatterpix, okay? So, so it's a free app, you can use it on, I believe on, uh, maybe as well, I'm not sure about that, you'll have to check. So Shatterpix is you take a picture, take a photo, 
Um, it does the grid as well. Okay. Now I don't want to take a photo. I'm going to use a photo that's in my gallery. And actually I did. We took one of Roscoe. This was the original of Roscoe. Oh wait, well I'll take one of Roscoe. Okay. So I just chose this picture of Roscoe, my pug. He is wearing a Santa hat already. So with Chatter Picks, all you do is you make a line. So I click next. And then after I click next, come on, Chatter. I make this line. Okay, you can make a line anywhere. And then I can make him speak, okay? Recording. Three, two, one, go. Hi, my name is Rasta. Oh, oopsies. And then I just stop. And then I play. I can play next. And I can do with this. I can even add filters. Filter, I can add him. I could put a rainbow background. Notice how it's rainbowy. I like this. This is my favorite one where I add stars. I can add different um, frames. I can add stickers. This is one that I like to use. It's a poop one. I like to put it in the back and then I usually put text. You can even add text. And it says, oopsie. So I'm just going to go and I'm going to process that. See how long? That didn't take long at all. And then I press play. Hi, my name is Roscoe. Oopsie. And there you go. I can post that on my Facebook. I can put that. Your students will love it. They'll just have a great time. Frame Artist with Frame. Uh, Photomania is another great app. It's, it's also on, online on the web. It's part of uh, Photophonia. Um, you can make all kinds of effects. You can put yourself on a billboard, on a city poster, all kinds of things. Frame artists, you can make um, newspapers, magazines. Um, it has digital postcards. Thing Link, you can make interactive posters. One of my new favorite tools as well. I use Thing Link all the time. Comic Head, Light, it's on your Android. Your iOS. So I try to use apps that are free and on both devices because I work with BYOT. So I don't know if my students have Android or I don't know if they have iOS. So I try to find apps that are free for both that do great things for both. Here you can add your own pictures um, or they have characters. They have all these frames. We storyboard on this a lot. Image Chef, you can make Wordles. You can make Wordles on your um, Apple device. And then, of course, I just showed you Shatter Picks. Um, so where will they post their pics? Well, Flickr gives you a terabyte. Instagram or a social album. Let's say you have a Google Plus community, then you can have it there. Um, Jake Duncan, who is just here but laughed, um, he did an Instagram account. And this is the Instagram account he has with his students. Um, he takes pictures of their artwork. He'll take pictures. He teaches them geometry. So a lot of times they did their Minecraft. Um, they made Minecraft avatars. They made themselves as 3D, and then they posted those up. They post their work up, what they're doing in class. The parents can go along. We went on a field trip. Um, well, we went on a trip to the Bammies, and he took pictures of deltas. He took pictures of tributaries. And then he put the Spanish version. Um, and no, that's a great. Um, that's where the hashtag comes in. So Peggy asked a very important question. Can anyone in the class post the class account? No. Um, the way they have it is that it goes through a hashtag. So there's two options. You can make a class account. Uh, which I recommend on Flickr. If you do it on Flickr, then it gives you, on Flickr you can do that. You just make one account, you call it Shelly Terrell's class, Shelly Sanchez Terrell's class, or Miss Terrell's class, whatever you call it. And then you have an email address, and all your students can upload via that email address. And it's best to go when it has email addresses, because then you can filter, then you can say, oh, we're going to post this, or no, you didn't write the right description. Whatever they put in the title, this is their tag. So when they put tags and then what it is, then that's the, the theme or topic it goes to. So the first week we did restaurant, then we put restaurant 1A was the hashtag they had to use. Um, kitty and robot, that's me describing. Whatever they put in the text is the description. So that's what they write, their poem to go with it, their thoughts, you know, anything you want them to do. 
you can find all the bookmarks here um, and then I've, I've also put them in the uh, I've also put them on the BLT e ELT link um, so let me put that I actually put it there so this one isn't as up-to-dated or valid anymore but I'll, I'll add that to that as well um, so you can do it with the pearl trees as well let me do the pearl tree here Yarn. Oh, thank you so much, Peggy. And that's it. So thank you so much. I hope you had a lot of ideas uh, for the upcoming year. And we will see you next year when we talk about um, the two next topics uh, for 2014, I think, are really important. One is the A through C of trends you should know as a teacher. So you will just learn about them. Um, and we're going to go fast on that one. That's going to be pretty fast because we're going to learn anything from maker spaces all the way to wearable technology, to QR codes and Minecraft and all that good stuff, um, very fast. And then, then we'll also, after that, talk about productivity apps to save your life as a teacher. Uh, my tips and my tricks and my free tools that I use um, so I can do everything. Uh, people always say, Shelly, how do you do everything? Well, I will show you. So. Stay tuned for those two upcoming ones. <laughs> and we will see you uh, next, every Friday, for.